In this video we're going to look at inflation rate and the buying power, power of currency. So we'll uh, do these example 9, 10, 11 and 12 here. Okay. So let's start with example 9 and um, I just want you to please ignore these formulas. Just ignore them and we'll just try and figure this out for ourselves so we can actually learn something and understand it. Right. So if you just think about this, with a 100% inflation rate, an item that costs $200 this year will cost how many dollars next year? Can you fill in the blank? Press pause and figure that one out. Okay, have you tried it? 100% inflation. Okay, so what we might do is we might take 100% of 200. I mean, you might just figure it out in your head, and that's fine, write down the answer. But if we want to take 100% of 200, turn this into a decimal or 1.00, right? <laughs> times 200 or 1 times 200, which is 200. So the price increase is 200, right? It's 100% of 200, which is 200. So the new price is going to be 200 plus 200, which will be 400. Does that make sense? So if the inflation rate is 100%, the price doubles, right? Okay, so now fill in this blank. So the buying power of a dollar will have decreased by what percentage? If you think about one dollar, think about buying power. So I guess to think about it, you could think uh, this year uh, two hundred dollars would buy buys um, two hundred pounds of flour. How about that, right? Um, but because of inflation, that two hundred pounds of flour is going to cost four hundred dollars. So this year, two hundred dollars buys two hundred pounds of flour, but next year. Your two hundred dollars, your four hundred, uh, four hundred dollars will buy buys uh, two hundred pounds of flour, and and therefore uh, the next year two hundred dollars, your two hundred dollars is going to buy only one hundred pounds of flour. Does that make sense? So your your dollar, your dollars are worth less. They don't give you as much flour, right? In fact, they give you half as much flour, don't they? So the following year, so at the this year, two hundred dollars are going to give you two hundred pounds of flour, for example. But next year, your two hundred dollars is only give you, going to give you a hundred pounds of flour. So your your dollars have devalued by half, if you think of it that way. So the power of a dollar has decreased by a half, right? And what's a half as a percentage? It's uh, fifty percent, isn't it? That makes sense. So you can think about it. Well, okay, you know, an another way to look at it is, okay, so this year, uh, you know, if two hundred dollars buys two hundred pounds of flour, that means one dollar will buy um, one pound of flour, right? But next year, four hundred dollars buys two hundred pounds of flour. In other words. Two dollars buys two hundred dollars buys a hundred pounds of flour, or two dollars buys one pound of flour, right? Or in other words, one dollar buys how much? One dollar buys a half pound of flour, if you think of it that way. So the va like the one at uh, this year, the dollar buys one pound. Next year, the dollar buys half a pound. So the, the buying power of the dollar has decreased by half, okay, or 50%. So there's a number of way, ways of, of uh, figuring this out. Um, of course, we could, we could do um, this. We could say, okay, the, the, the dollar uh, increased, uh, um, let's see, an item that costs two hundred dollars this year costs four hundred dollars next year, and if you just take two hundred and divide by four hundred, okay. So this is 
you would indeed get um, 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 over 50 percent so that's one way of doing it um, but th we do have a formula and which is where B is the decrease in buying power B equals 100 times I over 100 plus I so you might like to use that if, if you want so if B is the decrease in buying power it's equal to 100 times the interest rate as a percent over 100 plus the interest rate as a percent and or the inflation rate the inflation rate I and I is inflation rate for both of these formulas and so if I is 100 you know so here we're gonna say okay I is the inflation rate as a percentage so it equals 100 so if I is 100 we plug it into the formula and we get 100 times 100, 10,000 over 200. Plug that in the calculator, what does it give you? 10,000 divided by 200. Well, you can do it by hand as well. That's 100 over 2, isn't it? What's 100 over 2? 50, right? So the buying power, or the decrease in the buying power, is 50 or 50 percent and that's the answer we're looking for is that the buying power of the dollar decreased by 50 percent okay so anyway that's a formula you can use and by all means sheesh if you can figure this out with you know that the, the prices or something like that by all means go ahead um, but but the formula is there in case you need it too so we'll go to example 10 and by all means press pause and calculate the answer to this suppose the inflation rate of in Mongolia in 2008 was 28 percent what was the percentage decrease in the buying power of the Tugrik the Mongolian currencies like the Mongolian dollar the Tugrik so press pause and do example 10 see what you get okay I'm gonna do it now so what we needed to do was calculate the decrease in buying power as a percent and that you we use we can use this formula so B is a decrease in buying power as a percent it's equal to 100 times the inflation rate as a percent over 100 plus the inflation rate as a percent and the inflation rate as a percent is 28 okay so we just plug it into the formula we get 2800 over 128 plug that into the calculator we get 21.875 let's just round that to a decimal uh, sorry to a percentage with one decimal place and see what you get Oh, hold on a second. This is a percentage already, right? Because the buying power is given as a percent. So, you know, we'll call that 21 point, give it one decimal place, 0.9%. Okay, so this is a percent. So when we're using these formulas, the decrease in bar buying power is a percent and the inflation rate I is a percent. Okay, so um, even though the inflation rate was 28%, it means that if you have one Tugrik, it can buy 21.9% less flour or less gasoline or less um, bread or whatever you're buying or milk or whatever. Okay, so just like the example earlier, even though the we had a 100% inflation rate, so... Um, for example, two hundred something that costs two hundred dollars will cost four hundred dollars. Um, the buying power decreased by fifty percent. In other words, your your two hundred dollars next year will buy half as much, or fifty percent of the flour, or the gasoline, or the milk, or whatever you're buying than than last year on average. Okay, because uh, I mean different um, items. You mean I mean uh, you know as you know computers are getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, food is is definitely it's, it seems uh, you know that, that's a definite increase in in prices every year you you would almost say um, and gas goes up and down but but really does does increase on average every um, every every four or five years you, you almost guarantee that gas will be more than it was four or five years ago and so on but anyway
Okay, so example 11. Suppose the buying power of a dollar decreased by 4%. What was the rate of inflation? Okay, now for that we have a different formula. And just to show you how useful the algebra was that you learned, we're going to derive this formula from this one. Okay, so this won't take long. If the buying decrease in buying power B, and we've just figured out that this does indeed work, is 100 times the inflation rate over 100 plus I, where the inflation rate is a percentage. Um, what we're going to do is use algebra and come up with this formula for I. So what we do is um, eliminate all the bottoms or, or um, eliminate all fractions first of all so we'll multiply by a hundred plus I over one on both sides okay so B times a hundred plus I is what we get on the left and then these guys cross cancel and we have 100 I B times 100 plus I equals 100 times I multiply B in and we get 100 B uh, plus um, I times B or B I equals 100 I okay and now we're going to isolate I so we're going to subtract I B from both sides and we get 100 B equals 100 I minus I B I times B and now on this side I want you to pull I out as a common factor so we're going to factorize the right hand side what do you get pull out the common factor of I you get I times 100 and then I times negative B would give that Okay, and then to get I by itself, what should we do? Divide by 100 minus B on both sides, right? Okay, so if I divide this by 100 minus B, these guys cross cancel, and I'm left with I on the right, and of course I have 100 B over 100 minus B. So I equals 100 times B over 100 minus B, which is the correct formula, okay? So suppose the buying power of a dollar decreased by 4%, what was the rate of inflation? How we do that is we use this formula. This formula gives us the inflation rate as a percent given the buying power B as a percent. So we go inflation rate equals 100 times B all over 100 minus B, right? And we plug in B, which is the buying power decrease but as a percent, right? So we plug in the number four. Okay, so go ahead and calculate that, see what you get. So we should get 400 over 100 minus 4, 96, right? Which is 400 over 96, 4.166, etc. Okay, and round that to one decimal place. And remember, it's already a percentage because both of these are percents this is a percent this is a percent i and b are both percents so it's it's the formula uses these as percents and so that gives us four point rounded to one decimal place four point two percent right about so if the buying power of the dollar decreases by four percent that implies that the rate of inflation was four point two percent so you can see the rate of inflation is always more than the buying power decrease amount right so press pause and do example 11 or so example 12 and of course you'll need to use this formula suppose the buying power of a dollar went down by 80 percent from 1970 to 2010 what was the rate of inflation during this period press pause and do that one 
Okay, I'm going to do it now. So this really did happen. The buying power of your dollar has gone down by 80% from 1970 to 2010. What is the rate of inflation? So we use the formula I equals 100 times buying power B all over 100 minus buying power B. Okay. So press pause and continue from here if you haven't got this yet. Okay, I'll do it now. So you need to plug in 80, the number 80, as a percentage, right? And that gives us 8,000 over 100 minus 80, 20, which equals, cross cancel, 800 over 2, which is 400. And remember, I is measured in as a percentage, and B is a percentage, so this is automatically 400%. This is just the way the formulas are set up. Okay, it's just to make it easier. So with these formulas, we do not have to convert from decimals to percentages. They're already in percents. That's because of the hundreds in the formulas, right? So yes indeed, from 1970 to 2010, the inflation rate has been 400%. Okay. For example, if you're lucky enough to own a half uh, dollar from 1964 with uh, President Kennedy's face on it, that is 90% silver. So today, um, just because of silver, I mean, you're talking, this thing is, is going to be worth, I mean, you're talking more than 400%, but at least 500% inflation. Um, or, 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 so, so, I mean, th th this, this thing, in it, one of these coins would be worth, just on the silver alone, would be worth, um, you know, at least, oh, I don't know, ten dollars or something just because of silver I mean I mean the, the, the price of silver has gone up but of course the fact that it's it's a coin uh, it's a, a relatively rare coin um, it would be worth oh hundred and fifty dollars right now so in 1964 worth 50 cents today hundred and fifty dollars because of the silver in it and because it's also a coin um, so anyway this, by the way, is not one. This is a 1995, and the 1995 half uh, half dollars do not have silver in them, unfortunately. But if you have a 1964, then you're in luck.